absolutely he did because he wants you to know nobody's too far gone nobody's sinned too much nobody's disqualified by being used by god god's taking you somewhere if you give him his path he'll take you to the future you're gonna see it you're gonna see it god promised the children of israel the promised land a long 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 time ago he promised them the promised land they wanted the promised land but they had to wait for the promised land. They, they waited in the wilderness for 40 years, for 40 years in the wilderness until finally Joshua leads the people into the promised land. That's what we're going to get to today, by the way, in Joshua chapters 2 and 3. The people actually step over into the promised land, but just because they stepped into the promised land doesn't mean they possessed it yet. In fact, it takes them the whole book of Joshua. You read it on your own. You'll start to see it. The whole book of Joshua before they truly start to possess the promised land for themselves. Before they really truly understood all that God had in store for them. And I know you're thinking, well, that's interesting for them. I just want to help you understand this. This isn't just history. That God has actually promised some things to you and me too. That God has, God has made some promises to us, and you want God's promises. And some of us are waiting for God's promises. And some of us have experienced a little bit of God's promises. But God wants you to fully possess all that he has in store for you. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. That's why the book of Joshua is such an awesome book. Oh, it's so incredible. Because it's the precursor to your story and mine. It's such an awesome book because it's a parallel of our lives that just like God brought the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage into the wilderness to wander a bit to ultimately lead them into the promised land, God's led us out of some things too. God's led you and me out of slavery to sin. God's led you and me out of wandering in our own wilderness and God wants to take us to some promises that we're to possess. I'll show you. I'll show you. The Bible says this, it says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, just like the children of Israel were, by the way, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him. Look at this, who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God's taking you places. He's leading you somewhere. And the promised land is representative of the life God wants for you to live in relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the promised land. You're going places. You don't have to stay stuck where you are. You don't have to keep wandering around without purpose and meaning. You don't have to keep that feeling of being caught up on a treadmill, running so fast but going nowhere. You don't have to keep stressing about your tomorrow and your future and what's happening next. And you don't have to keep looking over your shoulder to keep wondering if your past is ever going to catch up with you. You can go to the promised land. God wants to lead you there. What is the, pro the, the promised land is a place of redemption, a place of blessing, a place of forgiveness, a place of prosperity, a place of fruitfulness, a place of freedom. The promised land is a land flowing with milk and honey. That means it's a place full of provision. It's a place where you can spread out and live the life God's always intended for you to live. You're going places. God wants you to learn how to possess the land he wants you to live in. And this is why I love this book. Joshua is a book of possession, of possession. And for every one of us who have so minimized our lives, our Christian life to, oh, let me attend church on a couple Sundays and pray most nights before bed. God wants you and I to know today that there is so much more to this life to possess than what you're currently experiencing. He wants to take you places. God has more in store for your life. I want to I want to teach you two things today about going places. Straight from Joshua chapters 2 and 3. I'll talk fast if you'll listen fast. I'll preach better if you respond louder. I'll tell funnier jokes if you laugh, all right, everybody? I think these 
chapters 2 and 3 are going to speak to you today. If you're taking notes, I'd love for you to write these two principles down. Two things about where God wants to take you and how to possess the land he wants to give you. Here, here's, here's the first one. I want you to know today where God wants to take you. That your past doesn't have to determine your destination. Joshua has a message for every person with some regrets, for every person with some shame, for every person with some sin in their past, for every person with some mistakes, for every person carrying some hurt, for every person who's been betrayed or has done the betrayal. Joshua has a message for all of us. And Joshua's message is, hey, you got a past, but it doesn't have to determine your future. That it doesn't determine where God takes you. Now I can tell, I can tell. Y'all you're, you're, you're are looking at me like a bunch of y'all just polished your halos before coming to church today, like a past. Preacher, what are you talking about? A past? No, no, no. I, I need you to know today that, that the label you've been given or the label that you've given yourself, the thing you did that you've allowed to define you the sense of condemnation you carry every day, that feeling of disqualification when I said you're going places and you were like, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope it don't catch up with me and I end up going to jail. Like I, when, when you thought that, with that, that, that feeling of me saying there's more in store for you and you thinking, oh, that's good for you and that's good for them, but it's not good for me. I want to tell you, your past doesn't have to determine your destination. God redeems our past and he works it for good in our future. And I'm going to prove it to you today from Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. Just before, Joshua leads the Israelites into the promised land, he has to cross over the Jordan River. And then there is a fortified city named Jericho waiting for the children of Israel on the other side, right inside the promised land, a fortified city. That means there's a battle to fight. I wanna, I wanna, just, I wanna just help you say, understand something that just because God's promised it, that doesn't mean you won't have to fight for it. Just because it's the promised land doesn't mean there's not going to be some giants to overcome, some battles to fight, some fortified cities to tear down. So they're going to go into the promised land. We're going to get there in just a moment. We're going to get to the promised land. But before we get to the promised land, Joshua knows there's a city we have to take on the other side of the Jordan called Jericho. And so Joshua does what Moses had done so long ago. Joshua sends two spies to go check out the city. They're going to bring back a report of what Jericho looks like. So when they get to the city, the king of Jericho hears there are spies in our city. And so these two spies actually have to go into hiding. They go into hiding in a woman's house. The woman's name is Rahab. Rahab actually um, protects the spies and hides the spies, saves the spies' lives. Ultimately, um, it is Rahab who lowers the spies down outside the city walls so they can go back to Joshua and give a report of everything they've seen and experienced. But I want you to see something about where God wants to take you based on Rahab's story. Let me show you two things about Rahab's life. Here, here's, here's, here's the first one you need to see, that Rahab is a woman with a past. She has a past. The Bible says this of the spies, and so they went and they entered the house of a, here we go, of a prostitute named Rahab. <gasps> a prostitute named Rahab, and they stayed there. No, oh, this story just took a turn. I know it did. A prostitute named Rahab. She's a woman with a past. She's a prostitute. She has a past, but it doesn't have to determine her destination. It doesn't have to dictate where God is leading her. 
In fact, let me show you what happens in this story, okay? Because she saves the lives of the spies and because she actually ends up um, proclaiming that their God is the one true God, the spies say back to Rahab, hey, here's the deal. When we come back to conquer the city of Jericho, it's gonna be uh, Joshua chapter six, by the way. When we come back to conquer the city of Jericho, um, Rahab, we're gonna spare your life. We're gonna save your life. But we need a sign. Our armies need a sign to know that you are here so that we don't take your life, but instead so we spare your life. And so they give to her a scarlet cord. Oh, if this don't make you love your Bible, I don't know what will. This is so rich. This is so profound. They give to her a red rope and they say to her, hey, Rahab, if you'll take this red rope, this scarlet cord, and you'll place it out the window of your house, when we come back, Joshua chapter six, and we tear down the city and we conquer the city to take over the promised land to possess what God has given to us, we will spare your life the moment we see that red rope, that scarlet cord. The Bible says this, so she sent them away and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. And sure enough, we get over to Joshua chapter 6. You're going to see it if you read this week along with me. And the armies of Israel destroy the city of Jericho. The walls come tumbling down. But they spare the life of a woman named Rahab who has a scarlet cord hanging out of her window because even though she has a past, it doesn't have to determine her future. It does not determine the destination. Now, let me give you a bonus. This is bonus, y'all. This is bonus. Does anybody want to try to put the pieces of the puzzle together to figure out why that cord is so important? That red rope, that scarlet cord, we see it all throughout the scriptures. The red of that rope is representative of the blood of Christ. That cord represents the cross of Christ. It's a precursor to show what is to come because... While there is this theme all throughout the scripture of possession, especially in Joshua, Joshua, there's a theme of possession. In order to possess what God has in store for you, you have to have a different theme. And that theme is a theme of redemption. Redemption. Rahab was a prostitute. But because of her faith and because of God's grace, and because of a scarlet cord of the cross of Christ, she has a future. She has a destiny. And her past doesn't define what it is. And her shame doesn't define what it is. And her guilt doesn't define what it is. And her sin doesn't define what it is. And her regrets don't define what it is. But God defines what it is. And God says, I'm taking you places, Rahab. I'm taking you somewhere. You want to know where she went? I'll show you. I'll show you. Matthew chapter 1, first book of the New Testament. <laughs> if you go to Matthew chapter 1, you start reading. Matthew starts out giving us a genealogy of Jesus. Matthew outlines for us the, uh, the bloodline of how we get to Jesus. He tells us all the names of all the people who, who, who that person begot that person, that person begot that person, all the way down to get to the bloodline of Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the world. And it's a whole bunch of men's names, man after man after man. But Matthew does this very unique thing. In the lineage of Jesus, Matthew inserts four women's names. One of the women, ah, one of the women that Matthew says is the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ is a prostitute by the name of Rahab. Excuse me? Excuse me? You mean to tell me that God used in the birth order of Jesus, in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the world, a prostitute? Absolutely he did because he wants you to know nobody's too far gone. Nobody's sinned too much. Nobody's disqualified by being used by God. God's taking you somewhere. If you give him his past, he'll take you into a future. So good. <laughs> 